9th and 10th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and I welcome you to today's session which is going to be as a part of your chapter, the fundamental unit of life. We are going to be mastering the last topic from this particular chapter which is cell division and we're going to be doing it in an easy simplified manner. We're going to understand it with some analogies and we will understand the basics of cell division today. Mind you that I'm not going to go too much in detail of cell division where I go stage by stage, phase by phase into both of it. But we're going to understand what is cell division, why we need to have cell division and of course we're going to understand the importance of cell division in living organisms. So I hope all of you today are excited for today's class and very quickly I hope that my audio, my video and my screen and what I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is everybody give me a quick thumbs up in the live chat to let me know that we are good to go. So I can see that a lot of students here who are very regular in my class is here with me. So I welcome all of you. Now very quickly today is going to be a theory class with some interesting analogies and I'll be asking you questions throughout today's class. But of course I'm not going to be having a mentee quiz. We'll do a mentee quiz later on. Okay. Good evening all of you. Good evening. Yes, yes. If you're in grade 8 you can attend but maybe some concepts might be a little higher end for you which you may not be able to follow. <coughs> And students, just to let you know that for all students who are watching this later and for who are watching live, my throat is actually not doing that great. So I may have a hoarse voice in between or my energy levels may not be that as usual as it normally is. So please don't mind with that, right? And yes, we will be moving to tissues chapter very, very soon, right? So now, of course, for students who are very regular to the class, you know what happens on the channel. But for those of you who are very new to the class, this is the timetable that we follow where at 6 p.m. you have classes regularly for Shikhar series on the channel. And of course, at 8 p.m. we do level up sessions for all of you. And along with that, we also release intermittent recorded videos for everyone so that you have short concept capsules as well. So in case if you find our channel very helpful, you can subscribe to the channel. But if there are students who are very new and you're wondering, Mom, why should I subscribe? I mean, I this is literally the first video that I'm watching. Then I request all of you to stay throughout today's class, see what goes on. And if you really enjoy the way we teach and how we teach, then you can hit the subscribe button. Yes. And of course, students who are very regular to my classes, you know the drill. But for students who are very new to the class, there are a few things I would like for you, all of you to keep in mind, right? So I call this as things to keep in mind for Aishu Ma'am's class, right? So what should you keep in mind for Aishu Ma'am's class? Well, first and foremost, I hope that all of you have your textbooks, you have your notebooks and you have your pens ready with you so that you can make a note of all the important pointers. Now, secondly, please have a bottle of water as well so that you can drink water as and when you need. Now, last but not the least, I am sure that all of you will have a lot of doubts, right? So when I'm teaching you, I will make sure that when I'm teaching you and if you ask me doubts, of course, I will not be answering it then and there because I'm busy teaching. So I request all of you to please pay attention to what I teach and please make sure you write your doubts in the notebook that you have. And later when I take doubt board sessions, right? Or when I take the doubt board section, you can... Ask me your doubts then and I will clarify, right? And for students watching this video much after the live stream, you can skip through the doubt board session and watch the bits and pieces that you need to watch, right? So now, of course, everybody, I hope we are all ready and let's get started. Now, I have a question for all of you, right? How many of you have got a paper cut? Or how many of you have chipped your fingers or you've chipped your nails and you know it started bleeding, right? <clears throat> it started bleeding and you see that eventually after a period of time, it's no longer there, right? We see that the wound that was there initially is no longer there after a period of time. Because we know that wounds heal over a period of time. So what is it or what makes the wounds in our body heal, right? I mean, it's not like we are doing anything. We would have got a cut, <clears throat> probably we would have washed it and then we are good to go, right? And then we just leave it as it is. But after a few days, we see that that wound is no longer there. So what exactly happened? Now on the flip side, there's an interesting fact for all of you. Did you know that our skin, our very skin that you see on the outside, 
millions of cells are shed that means that we lose millions of cells from our skin on a daily basis <clears throat> as a matter of fact if you see a lot of the dust particles that are actually there in and around you they are not you know like they are actually skin cells also they also constitute to a lot of dust that is there around us so how is it that the wound that we got a few days back it suddenly recovers or the skin cells that are gone from our body somehow comes back or does this mean that every day we are actually losing cells from our body and say if I was born with X number of cells over a period of time the number of cells are decreasing within my body is that actually what is happening yes or no what is the process that is actually going on well this is the process that is actually happening on a daily basis within our body. Just observe. See, I don't want you all to be giving me the answer. I know you know the answer to this, but now I want you to focus on what's going on behind me because that is the magic that we're going to be talking about today. So once again, quickly to go back and watch it. Please observe, right? Biology is all about observing. Yes, observe what happens. Okay, now that you have observed, I want you to make a note in your book, okay? Go to your notebook, write down what you observed, right? So this is how you build in your skills, right? See, if I tell you what is the answer, then you will just be like, oh, ma'am has told me this, this is what I'm going to do, right? But you need to observe what happened right now. You had one cell, that cell became two cells. Now those two cells eventually after a series has become many, many cells. So cells have multiplied in number, right? They have become more in number. But surprisingly, we call this a cell division. So cells are increasing in number, but we are calling it a cell division. Now in maths, you've learned everything ulta pulta. Now in maths, you know what is division, you know what is multiplication. But now your biology has come to defy whatever you have learned in maths, right? Things are understood very differently here. So let's first understand what is cell division and let's, let's understand the ideology of cell division by doing a simple activity to understand the analogy, right? So what do we understand as cell division? So you saw that when we got a hurt, right? Or when we get a wound or if at all we are losing skin cells, they are getting replaced back, right? So somehow all, all of that is coming back. So how exactly does it happen? It happens by a process called as cell division. And cell division can be simply defined as the process where a single cell is giving rise to two cells, right? Two or more cells, which we call as daughter cells. So here we have one cell which acts as a parent cell and this parent cell undergoes certain processes and it is giving us two daughter cells, right? So this is what we understand as cell division. But exactly what is cell division? Yes? Let's understand this a little bit with an analogy. So very quickly, can we please switch to a top angle so that they are all able to see what we're about to do. Are you all able to see my screen right now? See, I can easily tell you. I know someone will always ask me, man, why daughter cells? Why not son cells? This is a very commonly asked question. I actually don't have an answer. Okay. How many of you can see the screen behind me? This is the top angle view. So what do I have with me right now? I have some markers with me that's going to help me write all over the board. And I have some clay pieces, right? And I always find this to be easy to understand when it comes to cell division, okay? So now, of course, when you talk about division, yes? Take a minute. I'm just going to loosen up the clay. Now, I want you to tell me what do you mean by division, right? So when I say that you have to divide. So let's assume I have this piece of clay. And I have to divide this piece of clay into three. What do you mean by that? What is it that I'm going to do? Yes? What is it that I'm going to do? So when I say the word division, right? What is it that comes to your mind? One word that's going to come to your mind. Take a minute. Equally separate, exactly, to make it into parts. Very good, very good. Dividing the clay. So I can say that either I am splitting it or I am dividing it, right? So that means, again, break it into three pieces, separate it, very good, right? So this is what we understand by it. So here we are separating. The term separation comes into the picture when we talk about division, right? Now here, how I'm dividing, does it matter? As long as it's into three parts, right? The quantity of clay, right? I, nobody told me divide it equally. They just said divide it so I can divide it equally or I can divide it unequally. However, now when I say multiply, 
multiply or the term multiplication comes in when there is increase in number, right? When there's more and more in number. So what exactly happens during cell division, right? So in cell division, imagine if this is my one cell, okay? So let's assume that this right here is going to be my one cell. Now it's simple to understand that this right here is splitting into two. That means that if I split into two, I am going to get two cells, right? But now if you think about it, when I split it, didn't the clay, the quantity of clay become half? Right now, if you look at the quantity of clay, right? It has become half if I do it the way I did it. Yes or no? I had a single piece of clay. I split it into two. Now that means that the quantity has become half. So in cell division, does this mean that when I have one single cell, the quantity becomes half the cell? That means if there were five mitochondria, it has become two and a half mitochondria. Or if I have one nucleus in my daughter cells, I have half nucleus. Does this, is that the logic of cell division? Think about it. Imagine if you had one nucleus and now in your daughter cells, it has become half nucleus. Doesn't work that way, right? Because all the things inside the cell need to be intact. So what happens? Quantity cannot become half, right? Quantity cannot be half, which is why during cell division, what actually happens is that first, when this one cell is going to divide, the quantity will first double, right? So we see that there are certain processes where the quantity becomes double. So within the parent cell, everything, there will be copies of everything which is made inside the cell. So now see your existing cell has become huge, right? Your parent cell has become huge. It has become double. Now from here, what will happen? We see that it will undergo various processes. And then of course, we see that you get two cells. Now here, what happened? My quantity within my parent cell became double. Yes, that means that at the end of the day, my daughter cells will have the same quantity or whatever was there inside, the quantity has become same as the parent, right? And it was only same because of the fact that the quantity doubled in the beginning. Are we clear with the logic of cell division? Right, so whenever you see the word division, it does not mean that it is becoming half, right? But rather the term division is used, but actually what is happening is they are multiplying or they are increasing in number, right? Are we clear? So now we know, even though it's a kind of the fact that cells are multiplying, they're actually just splitting into two, but they are increasing in number, yes? Easy peasy to understand with clay, right? Okay, Amit, two complex method of teaching. This is basic general knowledge that I have used, but I will go through it once again, right? You have a single cell in your body. I said that a cell division is the process by which, wherein you see that parent cell will give rise to two daughter cells. You have a parent cell. Now this parent cell that is there will first double its quantity, whatever is there inside the cell, your cytoplasm, your organelles, the genetic material, everything will double first, right? So that it will make a copy, like a Xerox copy it will make. So that what will happen is when it is dividing, it will be equal in the daughter cells, right? So I'll give you a very simple example, right? I'll give you a very, very simple example. You imagine you are a topper, right? You are a topper or you are somebody who writes notes very well, okay? You are always writing your notes. Now you imagine that you have to give your notes to many people, right? All your classmates want your notes. Now what will you do? Will you tear one, one page of your notes and give it to others? Or will you ask them to take a Xerox so that they have a copy themselves and you have what you have with you? No, right? You are not going to sit and tear your notes and give it to everybody. Then you are not left with anything. But the notes are there with everybody, right? So that is where you have split the pages, right? But here, when you make a copy of it, everybody has the same notes and you have it yourself as well. It is as simple logic as that, right? So are we clear, everybody? Are we all clear? Can we switch back, please? Yes. I have gone out of the frame, but they will bring me back. Okay. How to know which organisms? All right. So now, so far, are we clear? Yes. Crystal clear? Yes or no? 
Now I would like to take a minute to see if any of you have doubts so far in the basics, right? Any doubts so far? No. Very good, very good. So now for students who are very new to my class, right, I told you, I will not ask you to like this video. But if you really enjoy the way I teach you, right, I don't really go into technicalities, but I start with something very simple so that you have a basic idea so that then you can move forward. Do not forget to hit the like button on this video. Do not forget to subscribe because I told you this video is all about simplifying cell organelles, right? Yes, Shweta has a very good question. Ma'am, how to know which cells do mitotic division and which cells do meiotic division i will tell you right i will tell you we, it is a there is a way to identify that and i'm going to do that part as well today yes so now we have understood that there is something called as cell division right but now there are a few basic things you need to understand before we get into the details of cell division yes so now if i take one single cell okay i'll take one single cell what are the basic parts of the cell we know that there is cell membrane we know that there is cytoplasm and we know that there is nucleus, right? So these are the basic parts of the cell which is there. Now, here, when we talk about the nucleus, we know that the nucleus is often called as the control center of the cell. So can you tell me why is it called as a control center? Yes? Why do we call the nucleus as the control center? Can you tell me? To all questions based on types of cell division, I will be telling you, right? I am going to tell you. Yes, Harsimran, I'll explain that part also. Very good, Shweta. Exactly, because we know that inside the nucleus, we will find the genetic material or we will find these chromosomes, right? Or I would say chromatin material to be more on, on you know, proper. And we know that this chromosome at the end of the day is actually formed by the genetic material which is highly coiled, right? So you look at how highly coiled this genetic material is at this point, yes? So if you see, we have, you know, all these nucleosomes, we don't need to go into technicalities of it. But simple DNA that is there, which is a double helical structure, is coiled with the help of proteins and it is coiled to form other structures and finally you get chromatin material. And this chromatin material will further coil to form chromosomes right and you've learned about this in great detail and Ankita ma'am taught you nucleus yes so I'm not going to go into too much technicalities of this particular part but here we need to focus on one thing it means that we have something in our body called as chromosomes now how many chromosomes do we have do we have one very big large chromosome yes or do we have many many chromosomes yes do we have one very huge chromosomes or one simple chromosome? Now I can see everybody is telling me I have 26 chromosomes, 42 chromosomes. Okay, but the answer is 46, right? Or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now we see that there are 23 pairs or in total we have 46 chromosomes. Now will all most cells in our body right so we see that most cells which are there in our body tend to have 46 chromosomes and in this we see that the first 22 pairs are the same right that means whether it's a boy or a girl we see that first 22 pairs or the first 44 are the same while the last two are slightly different right so the sec the last pair will be different in boys and girls so if it is girls it will be an xx chromosome or if it is in boys it will be xy and this is a very simple concept which we have learned in grade 8 also right we have learned in grade 8 as well how many of you remember this we have learned it in 8 standard right that there are sex chromosomes and there is sex determination which have this now very good question which I like to take is do all organisms have the same chromosomes same number that means rat cat bat human all of them have same number of chromosomes no, right? Different organisms have different number of chromosomes. Whether you take a plant, you take an animal, the number of chromosomes differ from organism to organism. So that is something that you need to remember. So we see that there are some cells which have these cells which have these 46 chromosomes right or what we say as 23 pairs we call such cells as diploid cells everybody please remember
remember this term because in your 10th standard, no, this is going to be something that is going to play with you. Okay. When you have chapters like reproduction, when you have chapters like heredity, terms of diploid, haploid, you need to know, right? So when you have a cell, right, which has 23 pairs or that is 23 into 2, we call them as diploid, right? Or we can say uh, or we represent diploid as 2M. Okay, are we clear? Can you all tell me if we are clear with what we understand as diploid? So diploid is a condition. Okay, so a diploid cell is a condition where they have both the pairs of chromosomes, right? That means 2N, that means 23 pairs is nothing but 2 into 23. This N could differ. N could be 23, N could be, 40, you know, 45, N could be 3. It depends from organism to organism. But when the complete set of chromosomes are present, when the pairs are present, we call them as diploid, yes? So are we clear with this? I'll finish it off in the next 10-15 minutes, not too long, right? Are we clear so far? Are we clear? I will, Shashwa, don't worry. I will be doing it. Are we clear with what is diploid? I will tell you what is haploid in some time, okay? Please repeat, definitely. See, you have 23 pairs of chromosome, right? No problem if you did not understand. I will tell you once again, right? So now you have 23 pairs, right? Let's go back to our... Can we go back to a top angle, please? Um, I'll do it with this, okay? Like, let me... Okay, just ignore the writings that I have made right now. I'll maybe swap the board upside down so that you don't see the writing. I'll do it with this. Now, imagine all of these are your chromosomes, okay? All of this right here, what I'm going to show you, they are going to be your chromosomes. I'm going to just make a few right now so that it's going to be easy, right? So the, this condition is important for you to remember, which is why I'm spending some time here. Otherwise, you know, I would have gone a little bit faster. So now if you see, this right here is one pair, right? This right here is another pair. This right here is another pair, right? You have three pairs, yes? So here I can say that there is one, two, three pairs, right? Three pairs are there, which means that in total, how many do I have? In total, I have six, right? Now, this six, I can also say that they are three pairs, yes? Now, this three pairs, I can also say it as three into two, right? It, I can represent it as three into two, no? Now, this three, this two is something which we represent in pairs, right? Whenever you say a pair, that means there are two. So, I can say this as two N because I, this N here can be three. This N here can be four right which means if i add on n here could be 4 n here could be 5 n here could be 6 n is constant i mean n can change but what is constant the fact that they are in pairs that is constant that 2 here is constant okay but n will keep changing it can be 3 it can be 4 it can be 5 now, what is N here? Basically, they are your number of chromosomes that are there, right? So, basically, if I take one set of it, how many? Do I have 23 pairs? Do I have 25 pairs? Do I have 27 pairs? That is what is there. 2 is what is constant here. Yes? Little bit of math I went into. But have you understood what? Why do we say deployed? Deployed means 2N. Yes? Are we clear? Are we clear with this? To all my students who still had a doubt, now are we clear? Easy peasy, no? Halwa topic. Exactly. Can we switch back? Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. So this is basically about diploid cells that are there. Now some examples, right? Some examples of cells which are diploid. That means they have 2N, no? We see that your skin cells have 46 chromosomes. You see that your liver, I mean your neurons that are there, they have 46 chromosomes. And your liver cells that are there is, they have your 46 chromosomes, right? So that is what we mean by this. Abhimanyu, very good question, Bacha, but I actually have, I'm going to be discussing it towards the end of the chapter. But if you can wait on for a little bit, I will teach you then. Yes? So now this is what we understand as diploid cells. Now why did I start off with diploid cells? Because you need to understand that the chromosome number that is there, that 46 chromosome number should be maintained within our body. 
Otherwise, if 46 chromosomes are not there, our cells will not function that well. Or I would say most of our cells will not function that well. And who is responsible for maintaining this number as the cells multiply and increase? Well, we have a kind of cell division that is responsible to do that, which is mitosis, right? So mitosis is a kind of cell division that takes place in most of the cells in our body, right? Or I will say most somatic cells. What are somatic cells? Somatic cells are basically all the body cells. Your skin, your liver cells, your, you know, your muscular cells that are there. They are your somatic cells. They are your body cells. And I can, another way of saying somatic cells is they are not involved in reproduction. Easy way. These are cells which are not in, involved in reproduction in our body, right? You can think of it in that way also, right? And we see that mitosis is an equational division, right? Wherein we see that one parent cells divide to give us two daughter cells or two identical daughter cells. So simply if I have to show you mitosis, okay, in your exam, what will they ask you? They will not ask you, explain phases of mitosis, go into details. CBSE does not want you to go too much in detail that you will learn later anyway in 11th standard, okay? But what you need to understand is that in mitosis, if there is a parent cell which has 2N, that means it has 46 chromosomes because I'm considering a human cell, right? If there is a parent cell, it will undergo certain changes within its body so that even the daughter cell that is there will give us will have 46 chromosomes, right? So we see that this will also have 46, this will also have 46. So it is equal, right? Parent is having same number of chromosomes, daughter is also having same number of chromosomes. So it is equal, which is why it is called as equational division. They can ask you this particular question. Why is mitotic division called as equational division? Because the number of chromosome is maintained from parent to daughter, right? Are we clear? Easy peasy so far. This is all that they are going to ask you in your exams, right? They are not going to go too much in detail. They will only ask you simple bits of it. Yes? Okay, very good all of you. Very, very good, right? So this is mitotic division. Now, where do we observe this mitotic division? We see that in the somatic cells, right? And someone was asking me, how much time does it take? It differs from cell to cell. Some cells divide really fast. Some cells take some of maybe a day or two. While in some cases, it may take a little longer also. But a few, maybe around few hours is what the time it takes, right? So somatic cells are basically all cells except reproductive cells, right? Except reproductive cells. Yes? Are we clear? Is it mitotic or mitosis? Process is called as mitosis. If you say it as division, it is mitotic division. You don't say mitosis division. You say mitotic division. Okay? Now, before I go ahead, students, any doubts so far? Okay. Oh, doubts are going very fast, right? Ma'am, please tell about somatic cells once again. See, somatic cells is very easy. Kids, very, very easy. You have reproductive cells, no, inside your body, which means that in your lower grades, grade 8, you have learned in reproduction in animals that there are certain cells which are specialized for reproduction, which we call as gametes, right? And there are various other cells in our body. You have muscle cell, you have skin cell, liver cell, that cell, that cell, right? They are not involved in reproduction. They have other things to do, right? So basically, your non-reproductive cells, they are nothing but they are your somatic cells, right? It's as simple as that, okay? Alright, ma'am, so when parent is undergoing mitosis, does it have 92 chromosomes? Wow, good question. So basically, when the parent undergoes your division, right? So you have a chromosome which actually looks something like this. It does make a copy, but it does not become 92 chromosomes, okay? But rather we say that it makes a copy or it makes a sister chromatid that is there, right? So it does make a copy, but it's basically it will be in this, a chromosome will actually look something like this. But it will make a copy in this manner where you still have 46, but now this chromosome has got this X-shaped structure. But eventually what happens is that if this is a chromosome, okay, this is the copy, when it divides, right, it will split like this, okay? It is going to split like this. So it does not inevitably become one, two, three. 
it builds a copy along with it as well right so that is what we mean by this yes so are we clear with this part ma'am all cells and all animals undergo mitotic division see all organisms not just animals we see that they undergo mitotic division even plants undergo mitotic division and why is mitotic division important because mitotic division means there is increase in number right so one becomes two two becomes four four becomes eight number is multiplying right so we see that mitosis is extremely necessary for growth it is necessary for repair and we see that in lower organisms right so we see that in lower organisms it actually acts as a way of reproduction so all your binary fission in amoeba all of that is technically mitotic division right it's as simple as that ma'am is it different or is it a copy it is a copy so if this is your genetic material no if this is my genetic material which is all highly coiled and everything it makes a xerox copy on the other side and basically it's just copying its genetic material across generation after generation it is same as parent okay same as parent Ma'am, why are gametes haploid? I will tell you in just a bit. Ma'am, in mitosis, always two daughter cells are formed. Yes, mitosis pe two daughter cells are formed. But normally, like we, there is a, you know, there's a check. It's not like cells are just randomly dividing. Okay, they have their own ways in which they keep a check on themselves, making sure that division happens. But in mitosis, two cells only you will get. Okay, yes. Sun cell A, the sun cell got debate. I am not uh, doing right now. Very sorry, students. Please repeat mitosis. Yes. Ma'am, why don't cell triple up or multiply four times their original shape or no? Why do they only divide into two parts? Okay. So, see, let me tell you the logic behind cell division, right? See, now it's not like cells divide as and when they feel like, okay, suddenly like, oh, I'm feeling very bored. Come, I'll divide and make two in number. It's the necessity of it. And in multicellular organisms, when you think about it, our body is already made up of millions of cells. Right? Already millions of cells are there. They are dividing 3, 4, 5, 6 times means there's always, there are certain many processes. It's not as simple as taking clay and splitting it into two. There are various components, various proteins which are involved. Which is why to, and at every time, remember this, right? With every cell division, we see that a process takes place which is DNA copying. You are copying the DNA. And copying DNA when you go to 12th standard, you will realize is no easy task. 100 million proteins are involved in just copying DNA sequence by sequence. Now, if they have to do it, where at one go, so many cells have to be produced, that puts that much pressure on DNA copying. That means that the more Xeroxes that you have to take. See, if at one point, if I make you take two Xeroxes, and if at one point I make you take 10 Xeroxes of a huge book, there are chances that you'll either miss some pages. There are chances that you will make some errors, right? Chances of errors or doing damage can happen, right? There are chances are very, very high. Which is why we see that to make sure that we avoid it, right? To, con to you know, sort of make sure that proper DNA copying takes place, we see that this happens, yes? How many phases in mitosis? There are four phases, yes? But I'm not going to go into too much detail, yes? Okay. What type of cell division takes place in viruses? Viruses have a mitotic division only. But it depends, right? Whether they have a single strand or double strand, but more or less mitotic. Okay, now we will move on. So moving on more to the next one, right? So this is the main key point that you need to remember. We see that chromosome number in daughter cell is equal to that of the parent. Hence, it is equational division. And this is the importance of mitotic division. In unicellular organisms, we see that it... Mitosis is actually nothing but a way in which they reproduce. So your binary division or your binary fission is nothing but a mitotic division. While in higher grades, right, like I mean in higher organisms, we see that they contribute to growth and repair. Yes, I will take further doubts in some time while I will move on to the next, right? Yes, all right. Uh, your teacher is right only see uh, going back to one question which I'd like to take see your mitosis division will have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase and there is cytokinesis that takes place which is splitting of cytoplasm but see in your text they don't have it all of that in detail so I'm not touching this is as per what is necessary for NCRT okay moving on many students had this doubt right that ma'am okay you have, you know, you have uh, cells which are reproducing through mitosis, right? And we see that by mitotic division, 
parent cell, daughter cell have same number of chromosomes. But how about in our case, right? Now, in sexually reproducing organisms, where there are two parents, right? We see that there are two parents. There is a father and there is a mother, right? And they produce reproductive cells, yes? So, to recall sexual reproduction once again, we know that in sexual reproduction, reprodu two parents are involved. They produce, you know, uh, reproductive cells, which we call as gametes, right? And these gametes, will fuse no they will fuse by the process of what they will fuse by the process which is called as fertilization which will give us a single celled zygote now here fusion is happening now you imagine if your gametes also had 46 and this also had 46 in fusion what is going to happen this is going to become 92 so do you think formation of gametes right formation of reproductive cells or formation of these germ cells can be done through mitosis yes or no in the chat very quickly do you think mitotic division can take place with the four gametes yes or no because you know that in mitotic division we see that there is a full copy made same number of chromosomes right no not possible which is why in reproductive cells or in gametes alone, we see that there is a different kind of division that takes place, which we call as meiosis. And because these cells have only half the number of chromosomes, right? So if you look at the number of chromosomes in gametes, we see that they have only half. So if my skin cell has 46, the egg cell in my body will have only 23. Similarly, in a male, we see that the sperms will have only 23. It is half the number. So, will I say it is 2N or will I say it is N? What will I call haploid cells as? I mean, what will I call this condition as? Will I say it is a 2N condition or it is a N condition? Yes or no? N. 23, right? It's only 23. Because they are not in pairs, right? They are not in pairs. They are only one half of it. Only 23 are there. And because they have only half the number of chromosomes, we call such cells as haploid cells, right? So we call them as haploid. Why? Because they have only half the number of chromosomes. But how is it that most cells of our body do mitotic division, but only in the case of gametes, we see that suddenly the number is becoming half. How exactly is this happening? Does this mean that inside our body, there are some cells which actually pre-exist as half the number of cells? That is actually not possible, okay? But we see that to produce these gametes, there's a specialized kind of division, which we call as meiosis, okay? Now, meiosis is very different because it's not that there are some cells alone which will survive as 23, okay? But rather, the parent cells which are there, right? So, the parent cells of a sperm or the parent cell of the egg, that is actually 2 and that means that will have 46 chromosomes, okay? But... When it undergoes a meiotic division, it takes place in two stages, right? It takes place in phase 1 and then it takes place in phase 2, okay? It takes place in phase 1 and phase 2. Now in phase 1, we see that here the number becomes half, right? So here is when your 2n becomes n. But later we see that it does not stop here. But rather we see that this in phase 2 will undergo a mitotic division. Right? So we see that it will undergo a mitotic division. Where we see that it will do like similar kinds. Right? So we see that it will undergo a similar kind of mitotic division or equational division. So it happens in two phases. Right? And in both times, yes, DNA replication does happen. But in meiotic division, we see that there are a few other processes that take place. Like we see that because it's taking place in gametes, no, and we know that their gametes are the one which res is responsible for transmitting information from parent to offspring. It's taking place or taking it to the next level, which is why we here we see that it's slightly different in the case of meiosis. But here we see that meiotic division is seen in only sexually reproducing organisms. So in your organisms that don't reproduce sexually, you will not see meiosis. But in sexually reproducing organisms, you will find meiotic division. And we see that their number becomes half, right? It's as simple as that. So we see that because the number is becoming half, we are saying it is reducing or this kind of reduction, I mean this kind of division is called as reductional division. Yes? 
So are we all clear with this? Are we all clear? Yes? Now of course I'm going to take quick 5 minutes to clear some doubts, right? So now many of you are like ma'am how to identify if cells are diploid or haploid? So first and foremost if we talk about an egg cell or a sperm cell whether it's in a human's body whether it is in the case of a rat or a bat or a cat whichever reproduces sexually we see that in gametes we will always observe that cells are haploid right now i'm taking animals because it is easy similarly in the case of in plants the concept becomes little different okay because in plants there are various other conditions also it's not like only haploid and diploid are there sometimes they have conditions where they have 4 and 3 and and all that they have tetraploid they have you know uh, tri triploid and they have various other conditions so plants i will not take because that has a lot of exceptions which you will learn in your higher grades but in your animals it is simple right if you have you know your uh, gamete it is haploid now somebody asked me ma'am what about zygote right zygote divides to form all cells very good so you have sperm which is n then you have egg which is n right so i will again say simply as i'll take the case of humans because i always find it easier to explain with numbers 23 and 23 right so now in this case if they fuse right so they undergo fusion by the process of fertilization it is giving me zygote so i will simply do 23 plus 23 or 23 pairs which i am getting 46 now from here the zygote undergoes mitosis right it undergoes mitotic division in order to go ahead ma'am can there be an irregularity in mitosis very good question now is it that all cells are perfect right cells are perfect they do their job and there's no issue with it see there are going to be times when cells divide and there is an irregularity in the copying there is an irregularity in maybe some gene right and we see that there could be certain irregularities which is why we see that there are various checkpoints which are there okay so within cell division itself various checkpoints are kept so that at every point the process is happening smoothly and if at all at the end of the day the cell is not proper it is not how it should be it's become slightly irregular the body will that's when your lysosome that is there will dissolve the cell right so the cell is not proper and we see that the cell will be killed or it will be destroyed but if the cell divides uncontrollably right so normally all of this is controlled but if it divides uncontrollably or out of control that is when we see that it results in the formation of tumors right i'm sure all of you would have heard about tumors yes all of you would have heard about tumors no yes or no exactly eventually tumors lead to cancer cancer right that leads to a condition called as cancer ma'am if any child has okay yes difference between haploid and diploid okay simply put your diploid cells will have to n right they are always in pairs while your haploid is only half they will not be in pairs no pairs right yes Ma'am, why should in meiosis division be reduced or why is reductional division happening? For the very same reason that the chromosome number in our body has to be maintained. No, you don't want zygote. Parent is having 46 chromosomes. Zygote is having 92 chromosomes. You need to maintain the number, right? So in order to maintain the chromosomal number from parent to offspring, we have mitosis. I mean meiosis, right? Ma'am, if a child has 47 or 45 chromosomes, why is there a disability? So there are times... You have like syndromes which are there when if there's an extra pair of chromosome, like in some cases, instead of two pairs, there might be, you know, three sets of chromosomes, right? So you have various syndromes which are there. And we see that that extra, normally we see that there will be either XXX, right, or XXY condition. And you can go and read about more of this where normally in sex chromosomes, if there's one extra which comes in during fusion, it can lead to certain disabilities or it can lead to certain changes within the body because that's not the normal work right yes exactly right so we see that there are slight changes in that case yes okay why chromosome has to be divided I told you right now very good question which somebody has asked me is ma'am what happens about neurons right so if a neuron has lost the ability to divide and because we see that not all cells right I mean to back up a little every cell in our body that is there right it's not that every cell is always dividing there are some cells in our body which divide and they are fixed the number of cells are fixed within our body 
So in our case, the neurons that are there, right? Oops, there has been some issue with the presentation, but not a problem. All right, let me just go down to that part. Right, so when you talk about neurons, right? So when you talk about neurons, we know that neurons are, there are certain number of neurons which are formed, but eventually they lose the ability to divide, right? So what will happen if something happens to our neurons? So we see that if the neurons start to degenerate, right? So if they start to degenerate or if they get affected, then we see that it can cause a lot of neurological diseases. So your Alzheimer disease, which is there, is actually because of the degeneration of neurons. And even, of course, we see that damage to neurons can cause various others. So even, you know, when you, you know, there are various diseases like uh, Parkinson's, many of them that are there, right? So we see that. In that case, these are all because of that. Gungon, yes, haploid cells in animals you will find in gametes, okay? Yes, they do, they do, exactly. Okay, all right. So, yes, Harsimran, just give me one minute. I'll just finish that. What is a strand in a DNA? Strand is basically, see, your DNA looks something like this, no? This right is a DNA strand, right? So here we see that there are two. There is one here, there is one backbone and there is one more here, right? So we call this as a double strand, okay? There are two strands where you have all these, you know, many, many chemicals coming together and forming it, right? Yeah, like hair strand, exactly. Yes, Down syndrome again, it's um, Disha, I mean, I think Sanvi, right? So Sanvi, Down syndrome is again a condition that we observe again due to the chromosomal conditions that are there. But if I start talking about it, it's going to take me a long time. So how about in the comments of this video, I let you know what it is, right? Because if I start on talking about it, it may go on and it may take us to a different trajectory. But maybe we could short on, short on the same, right? If you all don't mind. Thank you. Yes. RNA is single stranded, yes, RNA is single stranded, so it will look something like this, RNA will be like this, okay, but your DNA will look something like this, alright, yeah, yeah, sure, Disha, I mean, Sanvi, I'll tell you that, okay, now many technical questions coming my way, right, lot about technical questions, ha, somebody's found out what phone I have and all, hey, you focus on class, <laughs> So basically to learn more in greater detail with respect to phases and all of that, Ankita Mam has already done a few videos, right? See, she's gone a little bit out of her way to teach you cell cycle, mitosis, meiosis. She's gone into the phases, phase one, phase two, all of that. So you can have a check out at these videos. I'll make sure that I let you know in the um, comments of this video, right? I'll tag the videos as well. Now moving on, I will take a one shot also. Now very quickly, many of you have doubts in endocytosis, right? So basically in endocytosis, right? Think of it a little bit as phagocytosis, okay? Now endo means it is engulfing, okay? So if you have your amoeba like this, right? And you have a food particle. So basically you see that it will extend in this manner. Your plasma membrane is going to extend and it will engulf it inwards, right? So we see that it is engulfing in the inside manner. And eventually we see that it forms a vacuole internally. So this process is what we call as endocytosis, which helps, which happens with the help of your pseudopodia in the case of amoeba. Now what is formed here, right? We see that what's formed right here is nothing but a food vacuole. And this is right here how an amoeba takes in its food. So basically your mode of nutrition in amoeba is what you understand as endocytosis with respect to amoeba. Now very similar process can take place even in our body cells, also your lysosomes and everything. We see that if there's any unwanted particle that enters or if you know anything has to be transported we see that a very similar process happens but the end result that you want to focus on is the flexibility of the membranes right the flexibility that is there in the membranes that allow for this to happen is what you understand by it right okay but a party soon engulf is to take in imagine if I hug you and I just keep you inside like that and I'm engulfing you right RNA RNA right here is ribonucleic acid. Easy peasy. Uh, okay, one minute students. I can see that it is the chat is running very fast. But in the meanwhile, students, if you enjoyed today's class, what should you do? Hit the like button because I can see very few of you have hit the like button on this video. Does that go to show that you did not understand today? Or if you did enjoy, you should, no? Centromere. 
See, centromeres are basically points in the centros uh, chromosomes, right? Which help them uh, help them attach to the spindle fibers that are there. That is your centromere. You don't need to go too much in great detail, right? Because NCRT plate is not there, right? DNA, RNA, see DNA is mainly the genetic material within our body and RNA is mainly, you know, that helps with protein synthesis. But in viruses, your RNA can also function as a genetic material, right? Looks like butterfly. Ha, huh? yes, it does. So, ma'am, what will happen to all those loose ends in RNA? See, in RNA, what happens is that they, there are various types of RNAs. Now, I just drew one which is one type of RNA called as messenger RNA. They will be as it is, right? They are tuned to be that way. All right, okay. Ma'am, in the parent cell, right? So we see that in parent gam in parent gamete cell, do they copy themselves? See, in parent gamete cell, they are diploid, right? The, so I always told you that in meiosis, yes, we see that the parent cell that is there is diploid. So when a parent cell is formed, it will undergo mitotic division only. But when this parent has to become a gamete, no? So when parent has to become gamete, that is when it will undergo meiotic division. Yes? But during cell division, there is cytokinesis and karyokinesis. But do other organelles also divide? See, normally what happens is that you have a phase. Okay, I again, I don't want to go too much in detail. But basically, there will be a phase where all the cellular content becomes double. So basically, it's a synthesis phase which happens where all your things synthesize and they become more. And then eventually, all your organelles will be made available. In some cases, it's not like your organelles, your organelles can be synthesized also. Like for example, your Golgi is responsible for synthesizing your lysosomes and everything. So it depends from organelle to organelle, right? Yes. Semi-autonomous organelles are organelles which have the genetic material in them. Like your mitochondria and your chloroplast. Yes. Shelly. Ma'am, in cell division, the cell component doubles up. So there will be two organelles carrying out like two nucleus. No, no. Actually, see. What happens is that the nucleus takes up a primary role where the nuclear membrane, the nucleolus will all dissolve. So it's not like nucleus is controlling it, right? There are various other proteins and things that control it. But eventually we see that it forms, right? So it will not be like during cell division, there's a nucleus, nucleus per se, because the nuclear membrane will be gone. The nucleolus will be gone, right? So everybody, what I would recommend, no? I recommend all of you to please watch these two videos because Ankita Mam has gone in greater detail. And now if I tell you things which are a little bit out of context, you may not understand. But here's a quick question for all of you, right? Class is done. Class is more or less done. But this is a homework for everybody. Wherein you need to tell me two points of difference between a skin cell and an egg cell. And further doubts which are there, which I know a lot of you have, let me know in the comments of this video, right? Because I'm also going to be checking your answers. So you have to be giving me the answer for this. And students, did you enjoy today's class? I told you, right? Today my promise was to make sure that I simplify the concept of cell division. Yes, I don't, I'm not here to teach you too much in detail, right? I don't want to go too much in detail and get you all scared. But learn the basics. See, when you know your basics properly, when you go to technicalities, no, I'm telling you it becomes easy. Which is why my focus is on just helping you with the basics. And in your textbook also, you don't have it much, so don't worry about it. Now I can see many doubts coming my way, right? Lots of doubts. Palak, I, Palak, I missed your chat. Uh, stem cells are unspecialized cells which have the ability to get specialized. Now I know you have a lot of doubts for me because you know I keep answering doubts. But let me know in the comments of this video if you have any more doubts because I'm, a run, I'm running a little short of time. But if you enjoyed today's class, let me know in the comments of this video. And do not forget to hit the subscribe button on the channel because you'll have more such amazing videos coming your way. And I will see you all soon. But up until then everybody, take care, lots of love and bye-bye.